Hello and welcome back to the East Lake Pet Talk podcast. I'm veterinarian Dr. Karen Fling. And I'm Dr. Will McCauley. Welcome back to all our listeners and viewers. Uh, if you didn't get washed away in this previous week's rain, um, when right. we had a, kind of a weather-centric uh, show this week. And because of that, we brought on a special guest. <laughs> right. This is Rebecca Miller. Um, Hi. And we'd like to uh, welcome you to the show. Uh, let you. everybody know what you do. Uh, well, I've uh, been a meteorologist on television here in North Texas um, for about 20 years. And then I left the world of television and joined the world of aviation. So now I'm with Southwest Airlines. Very oh, nice. that's yeah. so great. Well, it's awesome. And Rebecca, you've been such a great friend to the orphanage for uh, so many years now. And uh, we worked together at Channel 5 doing some little pet segments. Yes. And uh, I remember you were always the person that was down on the floor with whatever pet I was there with. Absolutely. And just, it's been something so, so part of your heart for a very long time. For a very, very long time. Yes. That, those were always our favorite segments at Channel 5 were, were the days that you came on with the pet of the week. And, uh, and the other one was the zoo segments, you know, the zoo would come on for children's hour. And that was always something to look forward to. So many people uh, love pets over at Channel 5. And, and, you know, all right. across North Texas. Right. And so I, what impresses me so much about you is that you find homes for everybody. We do. We do. Always. We do our best. Mm-hmm. And we can't take all of them. We can't save all of them. But each one that we help, uh, we feel like we've really made a huge difference for. Uh, well, and for me personally. You've made such a huge difference Aww. in my personal dog's lives. Aww, well, thank it's you. It's true. It's, so anything I can ever do for you guys, I'm, well, here, I'm here for you. Well, what are we going to do about the weather we've had? <laughs> this is pretty crazy. I mean, with all the rain, and it, do we think it's gone at this point? Well, it's never gone completely. But we did finish up the month of May with the greatest amount of rain ever for May. We finished wow. with just under 17 inches of rain. I saw and, a, a news article to put out that with the rain that fell in that month, we could cover the state of Rhode Island in 10 feet of water. Yes, exactly. Wow. No with the that. rain that fell in Texas, we mm. could we could cover the entire state of Texas with eight inches of water. Wow. wow. So it's, That's amazing. It's incredible. I mean, in, in uh, March and April, we were talking about all of our lakes being so far down and all of our right. reservoirs and how much we needed this rain. And we got it all at once, mm-hmm. all within a month, which, which was good for the reservoirs, but bad for a lot of people out there and right. a lot of animals yeah. right and and I think we're already starting to see a lot in the way of mosquitoes and pests yes. and I know that's a another topic that's really important to you yeah and I am organic I'm a completely organic gardener I use organics in my house in my lawn to clean with and you don't need to use a lot of chemicals to get rid of the insects that we're going to be seeing now and uh, I definitely use a lot of organics in my lawn because I don't want my animals to get in it. I don't, right. I've already had one dog die of lymphoma. Yes. I don't want to have anybody else sick because of chemicals that I'm putting in my yard. So I've got some good suggestions for you right now. And, um, it's getting a little warm right now, but it's, you still have time to put down what is, uh, I think the greatest thing ever, and it's beneficial nematodes. And yes. that's what I have right here. And this is from, um, a, a company called good natured organics, and you can get these in any of your local independent nurseries. Just go on in and ask for good natures, knock out nematodes. It looks like uh, nothing. It looks like just a bunch of vermiculite in here. But what we're seeing are just microscopic worms. Mm -hmm. And you mix this with some water and you can either spray it on your yard. We don't really need a whole lot more water on any of our yards. Mm -hmm. But you can slosh it around in a bucket and just slosh it around your yard. And these will take care of flea eggs, of ticks, of fire ants, this will take care of all of them. And you mentioned they grow the up. temperature too. I think it's really important yeah. to note that you, if you're going to use some of these organic options like this, you mm-hmm. really need to get on it now before the temperatures get super hot. Get too because hot, you're right. As the temperatures get so hot, then these things don't work as well. So right. now's the time to be thinking about now's it. Now's the time to do it, and you want to put them down right before sundown. That's the best time to do it, and then it'll they'll sink into your your soil and they'll get to work immediately. Right, and, and you know you mentioned the dog with lymphoma. Um, mm-hmm. That is just a heartbreaking thing to go through and you know we were talking earlier that some of these chemicals uh, that are used and certainly a lot of the ones that are actually even off the market now that were used when I started practicing uh, they're definite proven links to lymphoma so uh, you must be careful and must use pet safe sort of products and you know if in doubt about what are the best products to use definitely consult with your pet's veterinarian or uh, with an an organic lawn and garden specialist Mm -hmm. any any of your independent nurseries are going to 
to have all of your answers for you, no matter what your question. Do you have fire ants? You can sprinkle dry molasses on top of that. Dry molasses, your dogs them? can eat them, and it doesn't hurt them at all. <laughs> you can use Get a little uh, extra protein. That exactly way. <laughs> right. It smells good too. <laughs> you can use uh, diatomaceous earth. Sprinkle that around the base of your house, both inside and outside, and that's going to take care of any kind of an insect problem for you. Roaches. You know, I hate to say this, but I opened the door the other day, and there was a big old fat roach that that walked right into my house. I was going to say almost came into your house. It did come into my house <laughs> and it went underneath the baseboard. Well, I had sprinkled diatomaceous earth underneath the baseboards and it was five minutes later that roach crawled out mm-hmm. barely wow. and then he keeled over. Well, that's and I thought that's the only good roach is a dead roach. Exactly. Is what I, say. I thought, okay, well, that diatomaceous earth really does work. I'd never seen it in action before, but it actually did work. Mm, so that great. roach is gone. But diatomaceous earth is another really good uh, pet-friendly organic solution to insect problems. Right, Come and on. I know we all agree. Um, another good organic way to go is backyard chickens don't yes. you think so dr mccauley <laughs> absolutely i was about to say with all the rain coming out um there's going to be bugs there's going to be ticks uh, i have in mind um ticks in the backyards and in the woods and everything um so if you do have a spot and it is allowed in your uh municipality right. backyard chickens are a great way to clean up those bugs um both the um the larvae and the grown uh animals as well right. the grown insects um better than spraying them down um and absolutely. It, plus you get to have fun backyard chickens and right. backyard eggs and, and like eggs that. exactly mm-hmm. right. we we have backyard chickens and we love them. Now tell me, do you protect them from, because I've heard a lot of things, you got to watch out for hawks mm-hmm. you do. in the daytime you do. and at night you have to watch out for owls. Yes, you definitely do. And so they, they can fall victim to predators, certainly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I kind of had this romantic image of my chickens all free ranging happily, but the, the truth is I wound up building a, a lovely coop for them and they uh-huh. have a huge enclosed, all protected area where they, they free range within a yeah, a lovely yard that yeah, no hawks can get to. Yeah. Right, but I, I love them as pets, and and they're really a lot of fun. And yeah. I've taken care of so many exotic parrots over the years, <laughs> and, and now that I've discovered chickens, I'm like, my gosh, they're so much fun, and they talk to you, and they do. Yeah, it was, they're, it, they're lovely. It's it was shocking to me that chickens have personalities. They do, Serious especially the layers. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. my neighbor had four chickens, and I was able to babysit them while she was on vacation. And those chickens were a riot. There was one that loved to sit on the barbecue. Really? It was so oh, wrong. Cut that step yes. out. Yeah, just get right to it. Forget the processing in. Just get right to it. I was always sitting on that yeah. barbecue. I had to keep taking them down yeah. going. Mm. Talk about using, you know, the organics and the non-chemical solutions for the backyard insects. Um, I know one of the best things to do is just put a big fan in the backyard as well in your sitting area. Because Absolutely. Because a lot of the biting uh, gnats and the midges and mosquitoes, oh my goodness. they're not really great works flyers for and mosquitoes. wind. And so... For one thing, it keeps you cool. For two, it keeps the mosquitoes and all the right. other biting insects right. out of the they way. They need a wind of at least five miles per hour mm-hmm. to, to stay away from you. But another really great solution, too, if you don't have a whole lot of fans around or if you're going to be working in your yard, is uh, something that's called oil of lemon eucalyptus. It's not lemon oil mixed with eucalyptus oil. It's a it's an actual uh, uh, plant that is a lemon eucalyptus tree. Hmm. And this is the oil from it. And if you look on the CDC website, they will actually tell you that it's more effective than DEET. How about that? Wow. And you can put it and on it smells straight. Better. It does. Yeah, <laughs> right. You can put it on straight or you can mix it with another carrier oil, jojoba oil or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. kind of oil you put on your skin to, to moisturize your skin. But mm-hmm. um, I take a little drop of that and I put it on my dog's head and mm-hmm. I put it on my dog's tail mm-hmm. and the mosquitoes stay away from them. Wow. How about that? Yeah. Really that's great. Not more than a drop because they hate it. But yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's certainly a great way to keep these pests away. And just a reminder, as we're talking about pests and and mosquitoes we really need to remember about heartworm disease and even though a lot of these things can help keep the mosquitoes away they they don't technically prevent the heartworm disease in pets so definitely bring your pets veterinarian into the discussion about what preventatives are, are best based on your pet's lifestyle. Only takes one mosquito bite to get a dog infected with heartworms if they're not on preventative, so we need to stay on that. Even if they eat the mosquito, isn't there some kind of worm they can get from ingesting? Or maybe it's a flea. Fleas. It's a flea. That's what it is. Yeah, that's with the fleas. They can actually get a tapeworm Mm -hmm. from eating a flea, and it only takes one flea to be Mm -hmm. consumed. And you would think, you know, how many dogs go around eating fleas? But we see it all the time. I mean, every single week we Mm -hmm. see tapeworms in dogs. Mm -hmm. And some of the monthly 
preventative medications right. now actually help treat those tapeworms if they do manage to get one. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's mm-hmm. a good thing. And we've got a lot of great choices to keep our, our pets protected. Uh, so definitely have those discussions with, with your pet's doctor. Mm-hmm. We want to keep our wildlife protected too. You know, we talked last week about um, turtles and how right, they were trying to cross right. the road with um, all the rain coming through. And Almost right after that show, right. we had a turtle. You had, had a, a turtle rescue. I had a turtle rescue, <laughs> and it, it was funny. I don't know if you know this, Rebecca, but Dr. McCauley mentioned last week. He said, "If you find a turtle trying to cross the road, uh-huh. take them to the other side." Oh, exactly. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Know I that. didn't know that. Yes. All this time as a veterinarian <laughs> and a turtle rescuer, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. So, in any case, um, did come across a turtle, mm-hmm. and it was an unbelievably large, soft shell turtle, a smooth soft shell turtle. And uh, these turtles are normally at the bottom of rivers or uh, kind of boggy creek areas and they kind of sift down into the mud and dirt. So a lot of times you don't see these turtles. And uh, even though these turtles are, are actually sought after for their their food meat. quality, mm-hmm. their meat. Mm-hmm. Um, we definitely uh, help this turtle get safely to a good place. And uh, we think uh, he, this turtle is a she, mm-hmm. uh, just by virtue of her size and her rather short tail. Mm-hmm. And uh, with as large as she was and with as chubby as she was, mm-hmm. I guess you can say tr- turtles are chubby, <laughs> um, she looked like she might have been expecting. Could so, have been. Could have been. So right you could have over. easily have saved 20 turtles. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maybe one turtles. becomes 20 overnight. <laughs> so it was really cool to rescue her, and I'm so glad I'm here to talk about it yeah. today and didn't get hit by a car myself. Uh, there were literally like 20 cars that went over this turtle after <gasps> I went over it, and how she held still and didn't get hit, I don't know. Oh, but poor little thing. Anyway, well, sweet The best thing. part about this is we got you have video of it as well. I do, I do. We're going to show a little more of that. Yeah, let's take a look at that video. Okay. Here we go, big turtle. Everybody's okay. God, he's like. Oh man, he was ready. Oh look, there he goes, there he goes. He's fast, isn't he? Oh, he's happy. Yeah, that's a good spot. So how about that turtle? Wasn't that beautiful to see video. her scoot off there and scoot be free? Scoot off in the water, yeah. Oh, yeah. Were you surprised how heavy that turtle was? When I, was I was shocked. This turtle weighed in at right about 22 pounds. And uh, there I am straddling the turtle in the middle of the road <laughs> thinking, am I even going to be able to pick this up right. and get it out of the road? Was anybody time? stopping and helping you or anything? Or were they just watching? I, I don't even know if people knew that it was a turtle. Because oh. even when I went over her at first, she looked like a wet paper bag or something. Wow. Just kind of squished down in the road, flattened. And when flat. you said you went over her, you you, you I straddled straddling her. her. Yeah, yeah I straddled else, her, yeah. and so did about twenty other cars before I got her out of the road. So wow. I'm glad. Lucky turtle. Yeah, yeah, glad to be here. Glad she's okay, yeah. and it was a lot of fun seeing her get to safety. Mm-hmm. And and speaking of getting to safety, mm-hmm. we've got a couple of rescue pets here from East Lake Pet Orphanage today. And this little kitty, talking about roads, uh, this little kitten here is Kia, and uh, named Aww. after the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was one that actually did get hit by a car. And you can see this little bandage here on this paw. And uh, poor little Kia is probably going to lose this leg. We're trying desperately to, to save yeah. it. Uh, but if you look at Kia, Kia is no worse for the wear and uh, is just a happy little kitten and uh, should make somebody a great, great little kitty. Mm-hmm. And, and tell us who you've got in your arms there. So I have Turner. Turner is a um, terrier dachshund mix we've had for about six months here at East Lake. Um, he is fully vaccinated he is neutered uh, very loving dog being a terrier dachshund mix he's pretty smart um, so if you would like to adopt either of these uh, pets where should they go they should go to east lake pet orphanage and you can log on to the east lake site at elpo.org and so both of these guys are available along with a lot of other really deserving pets and we're really happy to be celebrating a record adoption month that's so right may lots, set a record for oh, the yeah. highest number of adoptions in right. our history so. yeah so that's that's a fantastic thing to be celebrating but uh, whether you're looking for a dog or a cat or a bunny or sometimes occasionally a pot-bellied pig we right. have those too <laughs> 
too. Um, so and look we, how good these two get along you. together. Maybe somebody could adopt them both. That would be, be good. Great. That would be good. And, and this little Turner, he's so sweet uh, with a lot of the people at the orphanage. When they describe Turner, they say he just loves you with every fiber Aww. of his body. And he just kind of hugs up next to you and cuddles. So well, we've he's got, so chilled right now. He's yeah. about to fall asleep. I know. I, I bet know. that energy would come out at a dog park, though. Take him around with other dogs. I bet he'd be <laughs> running around. That kind of leads us to our uh, question that was right. uh, sent in by one of our listeners. A great question, too. Yep, yep. She was asking us when the ideal age is to take a dog to a dog park, meaning she has a new, I think she said a 10-month-old puppy that she actually adopted through Elpo, and she wants to know when is a good time to take it out for that socialization, um, exercise, get them out to a dog park, which is a great question. Right. Um, first thing you need to make sure is that they're fully vaccinated because – there's no better place to pick yeah. up bugs, honestly, pick up diseases than at a dog park or a place where a lot of dogs will congregate. And so you need to make sure that your pet is completely vaccinated, has all the rounds, fully up to date on all their shots, um, and is in good health. Um, yes. So it depends on when they started the shots, uh, what the protocol is. Um, but I, I usually say don't take them any earlier than um, than you finish the shots, which for our place is about four to six yeah, months. Yeah, about four months is, mm-hmm. is typically uh, where you finish the main bulk of the, the immunizations. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some young puppies and kittens, uh, they don't have full immunity even until they're about at that nine or, or right. ten month of age point. So probably your, your dog is really about ready to start doing some more uh, socialization. Mm-hmm. So if in doubt, uh, review the immunization plan uh, with your, your pet's doctor and make sure you're thoroughly covered because some of these dogs, we actually recommend a later booster at about, you know, six to, to 10 months of age mm-hmm. to make sure they're fully protected. And now with the influx of dog flu, a lot of people that maybe didn't have dog flu as part of their immunization right. series. I don't know that I did. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it hadn't been really a core vaccine for a lot of these these dogs initially, but with the, the influx of dog flu coming in out of the Chicago area, it, oh. it's something to be thinking about. So uh, go ahead and have that discussion with your pet's doctor to make sure you're totally protected. Mm-hmm. And for, for dogs that are less than that age, the the ten month age, you know, even from the time you adopt them forward, I think the best idea is to socialize them as early as you can, mm-hmm. and and a lot of times that doesn't mean going to the dog park. It means going out for for car rides together, visiting friends that have vaccinated pets. Right. It means just getting them used to other people, kids, other pets, uh, that sort of thing. And and let's not overlook our little kitten friends because they do well if we socialize them early too. Mm-hmm. So it's all definitely, about getting on it early. Getting exposed to a lot of different situations and areas, um, people and animals, because the more work you do now, the more it's going to pay off dividends later. Right. And and talking about doing work now that pays off later, uh, doing some behavior training is really important. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that next week. Mm -hmm. Um, There are a lot of great training programs that are available, and there's the Canine Good Citizenship Program. And if your your pet, be it a dog or a cat, is well-behaved, they're just going to be welcome better wherever you go Mm -hmm. and I have to admit I've been kind of a permissive parent and even some of my (laughs) own pets need a little help in that regard we all slip (laughs) I uh, walked into my uh, down into my living room this morning and my pig Piggy Azalea who (laughs) listeners will know had gotten into the trash oh no oh no thankfully thankfully it wasn't anything (laughs) dangerous but I had to give her the little side eye well and and I'm going to see if Roderick can clip to a little video with uh, Pepper owned by Ames who's a friend of the orphanage she works with Sky Helicopter and I tell you what, this is the perfect example of a well-trained cat that's just totally uh-huh. a lot of fun. Take a look at this. Isn't this adorable? Who ever heard of a cat that walks on a leash? Well, that's <laughs> that's Pepper for you. Nice trick to have, yeah. Indeed. Yep. Well, it looks like we're about out of time, so we're going to go ahead and wrap for this week. And, Rebecca, thank you so much thank for you. being here. It's yes. a lot of fun having you here, well, as thanks, always. Thanks for all that you all do. Uh, you know, I hope everybody out there that's watching knows how much work everybody over there at East Lake Pet Orphanage does for animals out there. Well, mm-hmm. it's a labor yeah. of love, and we feel fortunate to be supported by people like you and our friends out there uh, listening and watching. And, Dr. McCauley, how should our friends reach us? As always, you can leave us a voicemail by calling our number 972-808-6038 or shoot us an email like our listener did today at podcast at we love pets.net we always recommend that you subscribe to our youtube channel that way we can get on different 
setups and different ways to get to you. Um, and if you would like to, subscribe to us on iTunes. Go search for East Lake Pet Talk Podcast. All right. Well, thanks so much. And we'll be back next week with more Same Time, Same Place. Thank Take care. you.